Hey, hey, hey there, folks. I'm Pesky. You're bringing another audio commentary, and today we have a two versus two uh, commentary. It's been absolutely ages since I've casted these. I love casting two versus twos, basically because I can say whatever I like, and no one really knows. And there's no real two versus two theory, so I can basically say whatever I like. Obviously, um, Elf and uh, Orc quite a common team, whereas Double and Dead are really, really uncommon team. Uh, I, I'm not a big fan of Double and Dead. Actually, you can see they're doing different strategies already. But basically why I don't like Double Undead in 2 vs 2 is that so one of the best strategies is to go for really huge numbers of fiends and they just get in their way and you know you c there's not really too much you can do just in terms of uh, building units that work well together. Obviously like Human and Human is a great 2 vs 2 team, you can do great hero rushes, you can go for Double Mountain King and get permanent stun. Double Elf is amazing because you can get Priest of the Moon and Huntresses and they actually work quite well together even though Huntress have a shorter range. They just, uh, you, you can get, uh, you generally do it on maps with, uh, where you can get good positioning, get good surrounds, things like that. And also things like hide and stuff like that can be abused. You can stick at tier 1. Uh, double Orc, obviously, quite popular as well, just because you can rush to Wyvern and then just really have such a high DPS army. Uh, obviously, going first here first and then no barracks or really late barracks. But Double Undead, I'm just not too confident about this. You know, let's just take a look at what we're actually seeing now. Really late altar here from Simple Minds. I'm probably not going to bother even learning these players' names because. They just have Zanzi and I don't know who these players are. Love Plus. There's just, yeah, there's too many of them. I'm just going to go forget. Oh, we can actually see what they're talking about here. It's always fun to see. We can well, go fast triple heroes and banshees. Interesting strategy. I mean, obviously, um, getting uh, six undead heroes is really actually very, very strong late game. But it's just, it'd be really hard for them to pull off. We're going to have to see whether or not that's something they can manage. And, uh, Ooh, we are actually seeing a Torn Chieftain coming out first f from um, our Orc player here and uh, some nice scouting here with this Acolyte as well getting a bit of blocking off, possibly blocking that Voodoo Land from going down uh, which probably should be going down fairly soon if you're going for a Torn Chieftain first because you're going to need to do a lot of tanking on it, there's that Voodoo Land there and uh, actually this Acolyte could be the first casualty of war and uh, even using a Shockwave to get that kill there uh, I'm not sure that's the best choice in the world but I guess uh, he's not going to use that mana for anything else for a little while. Uh, <laughs> worth it being said there. Uh, clearly, I, th I think there's a bit of debate there as to whether or not it actually was worth it. I'm not sure it was. Like, using Shockwave on these creeps might have been a bit better choice. Obviously, it doesn't matter if you use your first shock, or which, or if you use the first, first Shockwave or you don't. Uh, very, very early on, just because you are going to regenerate that mana pretty quickly anyways. You know, the Death Knight is coming in here, and uh, we are now seeing... Oh, uh, some archers this year, and a tinker first. Ooh, very, very interesting play. Tinker and... Ooh, tinker and... I'm not sure about this. Tinker and Torn Chieftain, I just don't see the synergy between them. I mean, uh, maybe maybe we'll see something... I mean, we're definitely seeing something interesting. Looks like we're going to see lots of grunts at this point. You normally, you would see lots of headhunters in this sort of situation, but no worm else suggests to me... Or it says to me that we're going to be seeing mass grunts. And uh, looks like we're seeing fiends from Simple Minds, and are we seeing... We are seeing tech, and uh, maybe some late fiends... Maybe just uh, some really, really quick teching. Uh, we're going to have to see what uh, they want to play for here. And uh, this Tinker now has crept out this camp. Very, very nice to do that. And uh, this uh, Elf has started his tier 2 tech. You know, we are seeing some harassment here. This uh, Death Knight, looks like he's got one kill off here. Off, um, he just off one of those turtles. He has 20 experience. And so uh, certainly not huge amounts of damage being done. But obviously he has no other units, so getting any harassment is nice. And bringing all these skeletons in here is so annoying as well, because... You do actually have to microwave your grunts, and ooh, four skeletons actually going to be a bit tricky. Uh, when this coil comes in as well, that might be enough to get the kill there. And uh, yes, it will be very, very nice early start here for this undead. Meanwhile, we are seeing uh, this tinker do some creeping here with the pocket factory. And uh, this undead should have some fiends around. Yes, he does. And uh, he is now level two, which is obviously be very, int very, very useful. I love going for double... Uh, um, Death Knight's one of the few advantages of going for double undead, because obviously the Death Knights can heal themselves, and uh, only one player... like. There's so you can go for double uh, aura, you can not. I mean, as I say, there's no real theory to two versus two, so you basically have to make it up as you go along. Uh, but you can imagine situations in which both of you getting aura would be very useful. At the same time, obviously during the big battles, uh, it's not really too necessary. But unlike most auras, uh, sort of uh, things like unholy aura and brilliance aura are actually most useful out of battle, whereas things like endurance aura are actually really, really most useful in battle. So if we had two torn chieftains. I'd say that maybe one of them could get away with not getting that aura and uh, just getting both skills because obviously uh, you're only going to want to pick fights when you're with your ally and uh, at that point, I mean, uh, at that point you're going to have that aura anyways so you, you might be able to get away with it. Obviously the Torrent Chieftain doesn't have a huge amount of mana but I'm, I'm sure you see my point just in that 
getting that second aura on the Death Knight does sort of make sense, but at the same time, getting a Death Pack could be quite interesting as uh, well, just going really heavy Death Pack, and then just having like the ultimate tank on one Death Knight where it can just be called by the other Death Knight, constantly be Death Packed, uh, it can or it can constantly be death packing, it can just really be very, very survivable. Maybe, uh, ooh, actually, I wonder if this Tinker has gone for because of the threat of a nuke. That would sort of make sense. Obviously, Devil Undead is going to have a really powerful nuke, and meanwhile, Naga being picked up second, and so this Tinker being forced to TP away, and looks like the Undead team might creep out this camp. Uh, <laughs> a little bit of um, inter-team um, uh, inter uh, abuse there, and it looks like, uh, actually, we're going to see a bit of a push here. You know, this Torn Chieftain is far far away, creeping up, not close enough to level 3 yet to be uh, significant, and uh, tier 2 now, but no, no real signs of what he's planning to do uh, now, really, I mean, he isn't building any uh, slaughterhouse or anything, which would be the obvious choice, so obviously getting those stats should definitely be absolutely brilliant in a 2 versus 2, just because uh, sort of they do almost have an aura effect, I mean, you might actually need more of them just because there's so many units out. And uh, obviously they only hit a limited number of units. Ooh, very nice micro there of that one low peon. But some nice harassment going on here. Uh, forcing uh, Zanzi, this uh, orc player, back in. And ooh, it's, it's unfortunate really he didn't go for stomp. I mean, so you can see, ooh, very, very nice surround attempt here. Death Knight just manages to get away, though. Uh, he could have actually brought this peon up to uh, block it, but obviously in the heat of the moment, it's very tricky to remember things like that. And this um, Pinker is coming in here as well, blocking off this one pass passage. And uh, I'm not sure that pocket factor is strictly necessary, but it looks like actually we're going to be seeing some creeping. Yes, we're even seeing um, we're even seeing a uh, a sacrificial skull being used. So obviously the dedication here to those creeping, uh, probably not going to see an expansion quite. Ooh, tome of experience, very very nice. Probably not going to see an expansion quite yet. Uh, I can't get my mouse over that item. Hood of cunning. All right, I don't mind. I mean, it's obviously aura items are so good in uh, two versus two because they have twice the effect. But, uh, ooh, speech goal being used here. Will we see anything significant happening? Obviously, with no stomp, very, very hard to get that surround. I think it would have been so nice to get that stomp. Ooh, very nice tinker coming in at the last second there, getting that surround. That Death Knight is forced to TP away. Some very, very nice moves combined with some fairly questionable ones in this game so far. The Slaughterhouse finally going up. Still no Tier 2 tech. And, I mean, all Tier 3 just being teched here by this player. And, uh, this undead here has stored up a thousand gold and is still only at 30 population, now building his uh, third ziggurat. So maybe we're going to see something truly spectacular from him. Maybe he's going to go for lots of frost worms, something like that. Uh, meanwhile, we are seeing dryads now coming out. So maybe frost worms shouldn't be the best choice. We'll have to see how quickly we see a bear transition. Obviously, bears will be very, very nice against those fiends. And actually, backpack being researched for those fiends as well. Probably just for skeleton transport, but certainly a very, very useful thing to get. Uh, I'd say it'd be more useful actually if there are different races so you could go shopping at your allies base more easily things like that but i guess this is all right and it looks like this torn chieftain picking up a push in a fair amount very very useful item obviously for torn chieftain any time and actually a bit of a shocker there i'm not sure how useful that's actually going to be and that, but catching this uh undead very very far out from his ally uh with both players such a good fight to take and it's definitely very close to five though after that very very nice creeping and that tome of experience at the uh, one o'clock position and uh, meanwhile, actually, we're seeing some very smart uh, creeping here from the um, from the uh, undeads, and it looks like actually they're going. You can see they just sort of they, they burn a TP occasionally, but they're just doing so much creeping, and obviously there's just so so much importance on hero levels in this in uh, two versus two because it can really all come down to how if you can heal your opponent's death knight with your death knight things like that, and uh, not quite level three on this um, on this undead quite yet, and it looks like they're su suffering from a massive massive uh, lumber sh shortage between them. And, uh, yeah, actually, neither player is too much, and so actually being forced to build ghouls at this point. And uh, we are seeing this tier 3 tech slowly coming to a finish now. And uh, no tier 3 tech, looks like we're going to be seeing lots and lots of drides. Obviously pretty common in most 2 versus 2 to stick at uh, drides. We do actually see a warm one now. Maybe we're going to see a berserker transition, because we are also seeing tier 3 from this orc. And, uh, ooh, very nice, because getting this camp as well, this is really, really going to help them, because as the game, ooh, total experience, so, so nice creeping here. Ooh, did he pick that up for this Naga? That must have been a mistake or something, because he is getting crit back now, and he doesn't have that level 3, he's going to lose at least one Fiend here. Very, very bad. Not even going to get that Rune of Healing. Oh no, he does just get it in the end. Ooh, very, very close there, though. That could have gone very much... That could have gone so much better, really, for the Undead, if he had just picked up that uh, Tome Experience with that uh, Death Knight instead. And looks like this Torn Chief can get a finish off Creeping. He is now level 3, as is this Tinker, and uh, quite a high... Uh, uh, quite an interesting army combination, obviously lots of grunts for tanking, and then some high DPS units in the archers, and then some poison units in the drides, which are really nice support units, but obviously not too great on their own, especially against fiends, and so um, I quite like sort of this, uh, the 
orc and elf army composition. We know we're seeing a bestiary now. Two bestiaries actually, after two barracks is really, really um, going sort of for very high production. And it looks like actually this one grunt could be caught a bit out here, trying to get into a better position, and uh, they're just trying to get away perhaps. And uh, Nalka being picked up for, or sorry, a Lich being picked up to complement that Nalka. And uh, that's quite a nice choice. I think you don't really need two, uh, two Nalkas. And uh, getting a Lich is just so useful. And uh, I wonder if we're going to see an expansion. Ooh, we are actually seeing a expansion from the elf, actually. I was sort of going to say, I wonder if we're going to see one from the undeads. Obviously, it's pretty hard for them to normally expand, but all oh, that expansion being immediately scouted out. Very, very nice. And Simple Minds instead not opting to go for the kill, or just with the Death Knight, apparently, just with his one melee unit, he's going to attack it. You know, his entire ranged army is just sitting around waiting for him to be interrupted. And they have both um, heroes here hitting level 4. Very, very nice, and uh, are not seeing any upgrades apart from the Berserker Strength upgrade. You know, we are seeing a TP in here, forcing this undead away. Very, very nice, and that is going to save that expansion for now, at least. And I wonder if we could see a flank here by this uh, orc. Uh, if he had come in a bit earlier, then that would have been very, very nice. But as it is, I just don't think he's going to be able to do it. Ooh, not a great chocolate. I think only hitting one unit there, possibly hitting the... No, I don't think he hit the Death Knight, even. And it looks like, actually, he's going to have to TP out and go lose a fiend. Very, very bad position for this un undead. Uh, just having to get out of here. I mean, all three statues out. Uh, I wonder that, like, well, actually, since um, both players have gone for um, slaughterhouses, I guess we're probably going to be seeing destroyers. And actually, I think, yeah, we did see that destroyer upgrade coming in here. So, uh, destroyers, interesting, because obviously there are so many ranged piercing units here. We take down destroyers so quickly. Uh, we're not yet even seeing tier 3 tech, so. Now, uh, this could. Uh, destroyers, not necessarily going to be the best unit. You know, we are seeing tier 3 just come finishing in for this work now. And it looks like we are seeing the two undead armies meeting up now. Will we see them maybe go for a push on this expansion? That'd be what she looks like, yeah, they're just gonna wait one minute for destroyers. So actually yeah, I'm a bit annoying really to have this chat and I don't think that there's any real way I can get rid of it. Uh, I'm not actually sure about how team chat works in uh, replays. I just watch so few uh, team replays that are actually uploaded by the players, which is a bit of a shame, but it looks like both players are gonna buy uh, TPs and um, it's just gonna, and uh, they'll probably just move in for the attack. And I think they should be able to get some good damage done. Uh, looks like we're seeing a Shadow Hunter second. Interesting choice there. Obviously, the healing really, really nice uh, in two versus twos, just because there's so many more critical, critical heals you can get off. And it looks like we have Death Knight now coming in. Actually, both Death Knights are gonna actually. It's quite interesting that they're not just sitting a bit back. I mean, I guess they're not taking too much damage. But at the same time, they, considering that they could just not be taking any damage, it's. A bit annoying. I mean, there's some nice detonates going off there by the elf. Looks like he's going to come in for some more as well. Yes, very, very nice detonates. Those could prove absolutely crucial. You know, we are seeing a bit of an attack here from the back. We're actually seeing well, wind riders being transitioned to. I'm not sure if we've ha actually had web research yet. And uh, some nice drive positioning here. But obviously, they can't hold their own against those fiends, so they do need to get out of there. Or they do need to do sort of hit and runs. And it looks like this um, undead, these undeads just being chased in the corner. They did kill the expansion at least. But it looks like they're just not in a brilliant position. This obviously, is. Uh, who getting roar there? That's really really nice there for them. And uh, one zero upgrades and three zero upgrades respectively for those undeads. So uh, some significant damage being done, but it looks like web has not been researched, which is just going to mean that those uh, are going to take so much damage from these wind riders. And it looks like these destroyers are slowly going down. Actually, lots of mana left, but this tinker being focused down, being forced to TP out, and the torn chief actually going down. Really really strong play here by these undeads, just managing to get it into a really really tight position. And uh, so obviously then they have much smaller surface area so those grunts could do a lot less damage to them and uh, they did eventually manage to chase them away very very strong play there by him by them and obviously these wind riders i think they basically went untouched for that entire battle i wonder if we're going to be seeing web research now doesn't look like it maybe it was researched during the battle or something but still it's uh it's a bit odd that they wouldn't research it and looks like this is actually now going down here uh it's a uh, obviously so important to get these down and there is we did see that one go off there earlier for the orc and it looks like this uh tinker was um, but, uh, or, uh, was healed up a bit, uh, but he's just not able to hold up against his massive DPS, and another cold goes off there, takes out that tinker, and really, really nice play here for these undeads, and that 3-0 upgrade on those um, fiends for simple mines is just so, so strong, and uh, really, really, like, just the damage output is so high, especially against uh, dryads, and this looks like this turn chief from this tavern back uh, does actually have a potion of greater healing, which you I, I'm not sure I didn't use that in the last battle, and uh, the Shadow Hunter not even level two yet. So I wonder if we are seeing a push here. I'm not sure this is the best time to push. I think it's better to try and take an expansion now for these undeads, uh, just because obviously fighting in an elf space is always really annoying. 
to just trees that will hit you, moon moss that will heal, heal your opponent's allies just as you think you're focusing them down, and uh, just so annoying. I mean, all well, nice use of Burrow, actually, in the previous battle as well, Burrow was really interestingly, or really well used as well, and it looks like this one destroyer being morphed and instantly killed by those wind 